Hey guys, I'm Scott Murray from Hunters Creek Outdoors. Welcome to my house. Back here in the barn, uh, you know, I have all my implements that I use for the food plots and I'll show you a lot of them are old, but they still work. Here's my old Ford 1720. I do a, a lot of brush hogging, rototilling with it. A lot, we do a lot of video of our hunts. I just wanted to, these are the old lock on stands. This is a, a limit and this is a wind walker, super light, easy to set up. If there's not a stand, a camera stand set up, we'll use that. It works out pretty well still. Come on back and uh, I'll show you the bean plot. So I've planted beans in here for the last couple of years. Last year wasn't a good a good year, but this year's probably my best my best year ever. So these are eagle beans and those are ag beans. So I did a mixture just to see if uh, there's a difference, but uh, it's probably my best uh, bean crop so far. Come on in uh, back to the house and I'll show you the garage where I keep all my hunting clothes and some of the pictures we've taken over the years. Got a bunch of pictures over the years of, uh, you know, before digital came out and we used to use regular throwaway cameras or 35 millimeter cameras. And I mean, those are just thousand memories right there. Uh, here's a bunch that I'd like to put on a board too. And just, it's easier just keeping them there. Got my venison freezer. We're running a little low and I can't, go without saying about my antler ice buck urine we use that often yep and then our, our refrigerator here with all our cold drinks some of this too that i don't know if i've ever seen on but some peach moonshine we usually use that for when we celebrate a, a deer kill come on in i'll show you i'll show you some of the deer over the years here's where we spend most of our time these are all my best deer that I've killed over the years. But uh, this buck right here, and just quick talk a little bit about us videoing. I was with Jamie, and uh, it was October 23rd. I remember the date, and we're sitting in a tree stand, and I did the rattling sequence. And within 10 minutes, here come two bucks running right at us. Jamie's got the video camera, and he's uh, videoing the first buck. He's got it, and it's a nice buck. I mean, it's as nice as any of these over here. And all I saw was the width of this one coming behind. So I turned. <laughs> we didn't communicate real well. He's videoing like this, and all of a sudden, like this, and all of a sudden you see the arrow go right in front of the camera. <laughs> and I shot this buck, and he had no idea that it was even there. So that was our first almost video, you know, kill. You know, real quick, that's a muzzleloader buck. I had already killed a buck that year. I was with my buddy Doug, another one of my best friends. Uh, we're walking in. We see it. We we're going to shoot a couple does, fill dope permits. All of a sudden, he's like, here comes a buck. I pulled up on the buck. Doug pulled up on the buck. I'm like, I already got one. I go, let's count to three. You shoot. And then, uh, you know, I'll shoot if you don't hit it or whatever. He goes to pull the trigger and his powder didn't go off in his muzzle loader. So, of course, I had to shoot it. So that I have a, you know, that's a great memory just because my buddy Doug, I wanted him to shoot it, but but uh, just turned out that I got it. So uh, one of the first bucks I killed back here. Uh, with a gun, you know, when we first moved in. This buck right here, unfortunately, my uncle wounded this one. Couldn't find it. I found it two years later. Just a shame. We don't know what he would have scored. I never kind of scored what it was, but, you know, would have been our biggest buck down there or close to it. Let's see. This buck right here was first one that I, Jamie actually videoed me kill that buck. And I had to, I was holding for like almost two minutes and then had to let down. And then he walked through and, and I shot him. It's my first big buck with the bow. Shot him on the ground seven yards, which is really, really cool. I grunted him in actually with my mouth. And like I said, I shot him. I was seven yards on the ground. This buck right here, uh, this buck we called Short Tail. Saw him the year before. We figured he was three and a half. We would have shot him if we had the opportunity. Um, so this last gun season, it was 
the second week, third week maybe. It was like I think it was December 9th. And uh, we just went to do a, a, a little push to try to shoot a couple does. And he had to be home at 4. So I said, I'll just sit in that one tree stand and watch the field because we knew at late in the year he comes in the field from across the street. Sure enough, it's 4 o'clock. He leaves. I'm not sitting there 10 minutes. And I look, and here he comes right across the road. When I realized he wasn't going to close the distance, I got out of my stand. I used the hedgerow for cover. And I raked a bunch of branches and snort wheezed and grunted. And he beelined right to the hedge line and walked right to me 15 yards. Unbelievable that late in the season, but he couldn't handle I mean, stiff leg all the way to the, the hedgerow and then walked right to me. And then the same buddy that let me hunt on that property, I grabbed these fence posts from him and uh, I cut this rub down and, and made this whole thing uh, this year. So it's a really, really cool buck. This is another bow buck I shot on the ground. Did a scent drag through a scrape, got on the downwind side of the trail, and it wasn't 20 minutes, and there he, there he came, right on that right on that scent drag. And this buck right here is an eight-pointer that I shot with my first good gun buck. I'll come over here. These are the most recent, other than that one in the corner. This buck, I had pictures of them all last year. Never had an opportunity during bow or uh, shotgun season, but uh, second last day of muzzleloader season, I had him... Uh, there was a, a cut cornfield, you know, quarter mile away or whatever, and I'm pretty sure he was coming back up in here to bed, you know, right at 7 o'clock in the morning. And it was a great deer to get mounted, obviously, because my dad wasn't going to hunt that day unless he came here because he said, you know, the, the action at the cabin wasn't so great. So he told me that he was coming here. So I left the buddy's camp and uh, to come back and hunt with my dad. And it was, you know, fantastic. You know, I shot him. It was about 90 yards. He barely showed any blood hair and he ran toward my dad and my dad said well two bucks just ran by me and I'm like he goes they look like they're hurt he's like no I said all right well I'll just stay on the tracks until I get to you 90 yards 80 yards I don't know I, I picked up a little fleck of hair got into this hedgerow and it's kind of thick brush and there's the blood laying on the ground and there's deer laying dead 10 yards away so you know that muzzle or sometimes they just don't give a lot of a lot of hair a lot of blood uh, this buck right here is Rocky. The year that I named him Rocky, uh, I figured he was three and a half, and I got uh, some cell cam footage of him just beat beyond belief. His eye was closed. Looks like he had puncture mark marks in his side. Didn't think he was going to make it. And then slowly, as that was right around the first week of November, and then as the time went on and I was getting pictures of him, his eye started opening up. He started looking healthy. He came to my beans. He was eating my beans. I was like, okay, it looks like he's going to make it. And then the next year he, you know, blew up into what would be a, you know, mainframe 10 pointer with terrible brow tines. Um, he's got all those little stickers, which is cool. But, uh, I self filmed myself shoot that, that deer. And it was just so cool. It was like October 26, 2018. And, you know, it was a beautiful day. The stand I was hunting in, I, I knew I couldn't. I'm in a tr pine tree about this big, so any movement, the the branches moved. And what saved me was I hunted that stand maybe four or five days earlier, and I had some does behind me make me move a little bit. And I don't think they saw me, but they saw the tree move. So when I left that day, I made a mock scrape, put a pine bough from the tree when I set the stand up. I put a pine bough in the in the apple tree, and I put some buck urine and some dough and heat in there. And lo and behold, you know, three or four days later, I'm sitting in that stand and I'm just got the camera set up and I'm standing super still. And I just noticed movement out in front of me. It's probably around 5.30. And I could just see the rack and here he comes. And wouldn't you know it, he came right on that main run and put his head right up in that pine bough. He was quartering two pretty good, but I didn't want to move much on the stand, and I knew the camera was on him, and I knew I could, you know, had a shot, and I put a right on the front shoulder, and he went about 70 yards and, and piled up. So it was super sweet, you know, self-filming and killing a buck that I had history with. And then this one right here, this is my biggest buck to date, and I'm not too naive to think that it very well could be my biggest buck I ever killed. It's the only one I ever had officially scored. He scored 149 and 5 ace. This is Curly. Had two years of pictures and pictures and pictures of this deer and then the neighbors and and people saw it 
uh, saw the deer around often. Uh, I was lucky enough, one of my good friends and then a guy he knows found the sheds from the year before. So as you can see, I mean, he, he definitely put on some, some mass. I always wanted to shoot a 150 inch buck with a bow in New York. And I took it to get officially scored. And I said to the scorer, I said, you know, I told him that exactly. And he said, uh, he goes, brow tines are going to stop it from being 150. Just like that. And, you know, obviously he knew what he was doing. He's like, all right, if I look at that point, that's this, this tie, that the beam's this. He goes, I'm guessing 145. That's my guess. And he ended up grossing 148 and five ace. And, uh, he netted like 146 and three ace or something. I mean, it's almost perfect. So that year that he dropped those sheds, I had pictures and pictures and pictures back here. And actually one night coming out of the woods, I walked right up on him in my plot. He didn't know what I was. He took off, he, he ran right to the wood line, and then he just walked. So I know I didn't spook him. And then as the year went on, I fi we figured he was three and a half that year. So he wandered and uh, didn't really get many pictures until... After the season, then I started getting pictured on one of my uh, turnip plots, and the sheds were found a mile away, pretty sure. So then, the 2015 season, early fall or late summer, early fall, I I got started getting a bunch of pictures of him, and he just blew up. It was unbelievable. And uh, come first week of October, a couple pictures, and then all of a sudden he just disappeared. And I was hunting with Jamie one day behind his house, and we I was videoing for him and we saw a buck chasing a doe and I knew for a fact that it was him. Uh, and then a week or so later, Jamie got a daytime trail cam picture of him and we set up for the next day to hump behind his house and how it goes. Uh, they dropped me off in the four wheeler and I drove, you know, I walked real quiet to the stand and if he was bedded, he was bedded within, you know, a couple hundred yards. And I sat, in that stand and I kind of drew my I always draw my bow back just to see if I got anything and the stand on this ladder stand folded up and I'm like all right if I shoot I gotta move over a little bit I had a little buck walk right underneath me at like 545 went right to a scrape the scrape was 28 yards because I ranged it and then he headed off and then about 15 minutes later I heard some noise coming up you know from the west and I look, and I could just see the rack just come out of the brush. And I'm like, I knew instantly it was him. So I turned the camera on. I put it to where I thought he was going to be, drew back, and uh, got to that opening. And all of a sudden, released the arrow. And you could hear the limb of my bow hit the tree stand seat. And the arrow goes right below him. He took like three or four bounds. And then you can see in the video, I didn't mess with the video camera at that point because I was like, I want to I kill this deer. But uh, he turned. He started walking back. He must have caught scent of that small buck in that scrape. And he walked right up into that scrape, put his head into that scrape, just walked out of frame, camera view, and I shot him at 28 yards. And my best buck to date, and like I said, it very well could be my biggest ever. Uh, I'm not going to stop trying, though, because it's what I love to do, and I want get, to get Levi into this one. Yeah, unfortunately, this buck right here, this is pretty boy. This is one that I was going to try to let go, and a uh, uh, neighbor found him, and... <laughs> neighbor found him and it looked like someone poached him and shot him with a 22 or something because he found him the first week of gun season he said he looked like the deer weighed about 100 pounds and I had all kinds of trail cam footage of him and he was you know good and healthy so and he would have just been a a beautiful 10 pointer if he made it yeah so those are those are my bucks and like I said uh you know, our group, Hunters Creek Outdoors, we've been together, uh, us guys have been together for a long, long time, and we don't try to video to get famous, I guess. Uh, we, I just like to video just to get the memories on, on, on tape so we have them forever, and uh, it's just something we love to do together. So, yeah, uh, Levi wants, to see, he wants you to see his playroom, so you can quick look and, and, and the mad dash and I'm trying to clean. Oh, yeah. It's not. It serves not only as my playroom or a playroom, but it's also my workout room because the gym hasn't been open. So here I'm using salt bags and dumbbells. Oh, and Levi is a big musician. He loves to he loves to play uh, the piano, and he's got a little electric guitar. So, and on that note, I think you guys gotta leave.
Thanks for watching this episode of Whitetail Cribs. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're wondering who the heck we are and how the heck we travel across the country to record these episodes, we are Exodus Trail Cameras and simply believe quality trail cameras should not cost a fortune. That's why five years ago, we started a direct-to-consumer company to tackle some of the biggest frustrations we've seen as typical trail camera users. Product longevity, product performance, and customer service. We simply build cameras that flat out work in the harshest conditions and back them up with best in class customer service. We're proud to say we have the industry's leading five year warranty that even includes theft and accidental damage coverage. If you'd like to learn more about Exodus and the products we have to offer, click the link in the description and head over to our website. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in a comment below or shoot us an email.